Welcome back to the Acoustic Shop channel. My name is John. I'm here with this guy whose I'm name Jeremy. is Jeremy. Nice to meet you guys. I appreciate you dropping in unexpectedly. <laughs> well, where did you come from? <laughs> well, let's just sit down and talk about some guitars here. <laughs> what are we talking about today, John? Here's what we're going to do. Today, we are going to talk about the difference between slope shoulder guitars and square shoulder guitars. It's is there a difference? Square shoulder? Square, square shoulder. shoulder. Yeah, they're just old. Bad anyway, posture. is there a difference? Can you hear it? And all the other things that go along with what is a square shoulder or slope shoulder dread. So we're going to talk about that right after this. So here we are today, Jeremy, talking about square and slope shoulder dreadnoughts. But before we get all into that and what that means, I'd love you all to join us in our community. In fact, Please. if you haven't subscribed, you don't yeah. get to listen any further. Please right. leave the channel. Go! No, don't. Stay there. But <laughs> if you do enjoy this video or any of the content we're doing, make sure you subscribe to the channel and yeah. also click the notification button. And uh, that just helps us gain a bigger following and we get to do more of this, which we enjoy doing. That's so right. thank you guys. So there are two different types of dreadnought guitars. And this goes back to the history of Martin guitars versus Gibson guitars. What was the deal? Guitar and actually, wars. Yeah, actually it started even with Martin. Martin, the original dreadnoughts were slope shouldered. They were at the 12th fret later on moved to the 14th fret, and when they did that, they squared off this shoulder, making it more of a 90 degree angle with the neck, versus that guitar right there, which is more kind of a slope shoulder. Instantly. It slopes around before being flattened. And what happened was, Martin continued that with the 14th fret guitar. Gibson then later came out with their jumbo, which, as you all know, the J45, 35, 50s, all those various different jumbos, had a slope shoulder at the 14th fret more of that style and look. Obviously there was a difference in the voicing of those guitars and what they were all about, but today what we want to find out is how much of a difference does it make in a similarly, similarly, similarly <laughs> spec <laughs> guitar. And that's what we have because we have actually been working with Tom Bedell uh, and we kind of convinced him that the Dreadnought lover tends to be more of a square shoulder fan. Um, there are obviously a lot of people that love this, but there are more people when they think Dreadnought think square shoulder. The cool thing about the original Coffeehouse Dread was even though it was a slope shoulder Dread, it sounded more like a typical square shoulder. And that's due to the sound optimization that uh, Bedell does and really kind of voicing it to be that way. That said, I know a lot of the Dreadnought buyers, they are more traditional type people. They love their square Just shoulders. Aesthetically. The aesthetic. But it also does make a difference in the, in the sound. Even though that's more like a square shoulder Dread, it didn't quite have the same deal. And that's what we're going to talk about. What do you normally find, to, uh, to? Like on average, what do you find totally different between a square shoulder and a slope shoulder? I find... Is there consistently a tone that you hear? In my opinion, yes. Uh, I find that the, uh, yes, the slope shoulder the tends style. to have a peak in the high mids that uh, doesn't exist in the square shoulder, where this has a little bit more attack and, you know, frontward projection. It's a little softer tone, a little bit more, just, I, I, I don't know how to There's characterize it. There's something going it, on inside the chamber different. of the guitar where made those rounded curves, you're letting the notes swirl around in circles and create a little bit of a cyclone action. And I, I like the square it. shoulders kind of, so I'm has, making all that So that's the Dyson of, uh, of <laughs> guitar no, tone. I don't know if that's true at all. Um, but it definitely does make a difference. Is it subtle? I think that's what this particular pairing tells you. I've got to play these uh, a bunch over the last couple of weeks because this is prototype number one. The very first square-shouldered dreadnought to be built has come By in here. By Bedell. By Bedell, sorry. <laughs> and, and I'm loving it. I really am. This is doing everything that I expected them to get out of a square-shouldered dread. I've always loved the Coffee House Dread. Um, it's a great sounding guitar, but I really thought they'd kind of hit a home run if they went to the square. So I think this is going to be a really cool kind of test to go, hey, is there a difference? Yeah, it's slight. It's different, but it's slight. All right. Well, I can't wait to hear it. Here we go.
to me, both, yes, there both is a great sounding guitars. Absolutely, great. but again, one of the reasons that you kind of let or encourage Tom to go the direction of the square shoulder is just tradition. The the dreadnought player is used to seeing a uh, aesthetic appearance to it and hearing the tone of maybe that more, more Martin style. Um, country may be used a lot more the the slope shoulder Gibsons for more of a strumming guitar, but for that flat picking lead, I think we're just used to that tone and look of a square shoulder, and I think it did make a difference. I think that is exactly where it makes a difference. If you're playing more of a flat picking style with the distinct notes, these are more punchy. They have more mids. They have just, just this kick that just pops out of the guitar a little bit more. Again, it is subtle. It is not dramatic. Um, and you may listen to these two and go, hey, I like that. And in that case, Tom, I'm sorry. Uh, there you go. It's what I it is. I hope you kept those old molds. <laughs> but I do think that the majority of people looking for this kind of boutique, traditional style guitar and dreadnought, man, they're going to be missing out if they do not look at these new square shoulders. I think it's a monster. The more I play this guitar, the more I like it. I know we're going to sell a bunch of them. So I, I'm, I'm I think it's going to be great. It. Yeah, and we're going to see them in different, uh, without the uh, sunburst, we're going to see them in natural tops, special edition versions in here, all that kind of stuff. So be on the lookout for that, and then tell us what you guys think. Do you like the more uh, slope shoulder sound? Yeah, I guess do you like more of the slope shoulder Let us know if you like sound. the look and also tone. Which one do you prefer, the look and tone of? Yeah. Uh, be interested, because there, there's a market for everyone out there, so be interesting to see if we have kind of a consensus online. Yep. So if you like this video, I think a cool one that you should check out next is the actual review of this guitar. So we talk about what the specs are, all the things that kind of make it the new square shoulder guitar from Bedell, as well as the things that are going to be coming out in the near future. And I uh, hope you all enjoy check it. You it can out. check that link. It's going to be right over here. And uh, until next time, y'all, thank you all so much for visiting, and uh, we will see you on the next video.